Okay, um, to finish off sorting uh, as a topic, one more um, algorithm I want to show you. Patience chart. Patience chart. It's na uh, named after the card game Patience. Um, and the way this one works, um, you make stacks that are sorted without disturbing the earlier part of the stack. So, you take three. Let's say this is the array, input array. You take three, three, so far we don't have anything, we put a three here. Then we take eight. Eight cannot go on top of three because eight is bigger than three, so we have to start a new stack. Seven can go on top of eight. Whenever something can go on top of something, try to do that. One can go on top of both three and seven. You let's say we scan from this side. The first time we find something where we can put on top of something, we put it on top of it. Four cannot go on top of this, but can go on top of this. I should, uh, nine cannot go on top of either one. Ten cannot go on top of either, any one of these. Two is scan from here, scan. Two can go on top of this. Six and five cannot go here, cannot go here, can go here. Five cannot go here, cannot, can go here. Once you make these stacks, now you combine them into one array. The way you do it is, you see, you have, the way this has been made, the lowest element in the array is guaranteed to be on top of one of these stacks. And indeed, one is on top of these. So you scan the array, the top of each array, or, or uh, think of the stack, top of each stack from the top, one is the lowest, you write down one and pop it or delete it. Right? So let's say delete it. Then 3, 2, 5, 10. Which one is the lowest? 2. 3, 4, 5, 10. 3. 4, 5, 10. 4. 7, 5, 10. 5 is the lowest. 7, 6, 10. 6 is the lowest. 7, sorry, 7, 9, 10, 7 is the lowest. 8, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10. And it's sorted. This actually, um, this sorting is method is used by many people um, so, um, uh, in analog situations. Imagine a teacher, a teacher has uh, 100 papers, 300 papers, let's say. Uh, exam papers and he wants to alphabetize them, he or she wants to alphabetize them, then one way to do it is to do bucket sort. Quickly go through, throw all the A's here, or let's say all the A's and B's and C's. The last time we get A, B, C here, and then a bucket of DEFs, GHIs and so on and so forth. And then sort each little group of papers, little group, and then put this on top of this, that will be bucket sort. Another way would be to do that, just lay it out. And then, oh, this can go on top of this, put it. And then, um, and then you just start collecting. You just see the few stacks in front of you. What's the lowest? This one. What's the lowest? This one. And you just keep picking it up afterwards. What's the complexity of doing this? Uh, interesting. Is this going to be n square? Is it going to be n log n? Is it going to be linear? What is it? Um, here, notice that we are comparing elements of each other. Right? We don't compare it to some reference. It's not like a counting sort of some sort. It's um, we take the first guy, the second guy gets compared to the previous guys. So it is truly a comparison based sort of algorithm where the elements are being compared to each other. And so, uh, one fact mathematically can prove that on average the number of stacks will come out to be square root of n. Square root of n stacks on average. Right? So, okay. We have distribution, right? Which is what's the performance of this theta of? So it, it, let's say in the middle of this, we have a giant array in the middle of distribution. Let's say we already have roughly squared of n stacks. When we take the next number three on top of what it can go, we have to compare squared of n stacks. And the moment we find three is low, less than the top guy in some stack, we put it there. So. It's the square root of n comparison time for each of the n elements. So the distribution is theta of n times the 
times square root n. And then the collection. Collection. You scan the roughly the square root n stacks for the min, find the min. Remember, min, finding minimum of a set of numbers is linear in the in the number of numbers. So if square root n numbers that you're seeing at any given time, finding the minimum of that is the square root of n performance. And you have to do square root of n performance for every time you collect a number. So the collection is also theta of n square root of n. And so overall this guy is theta of n square root of n. This is on average, okay? Worst case, of course, you can have worst cases such as for example if the array was reverse sorted, you put 10, no, uh, it was close to being sorted, you put a 1, then you cannot put a 2 on top, you have to make a new stack, a new stack, you might have close to being linear number of stacks if the array was already close to being sorted. But on average, its performance is n squared of n. And so it's between n square uh, and the n log n, right? This is the first time we're seeing an algorithm whose average case performance is actually somewhere between the two common performances we've seen n square, insertion and selection, n log n, quick sort, and uh, merge sort. Uh, and, and, but these are all comparison based sorting algorithms. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about counting sort or radix sort or something which are, which are uh, linear under certain assumptions, which is even less than one. We're not talking about that. Okay, so this is an interesting algorithm and it's also useful in daily life analog situations. To finish the discussion of sorting, we talked about analog situations. Let me talk about one more algorithm, but this time it's a purely analog algorithm. Imagine you have n numbers to sort, and uh, imagine you go ahead, uh, this is an analog sorting algorithm. Forget this one. Um, imagine you have 100 spaghettis that are all of different heights. Okay? Or maybe some of them are equal heights, doesn't matter. Um, so each height represents a number, right? What do you do? You take your 100 spaghettis in your hand and you, you know, you on, the, on a table or something align that so the bottom is aligned and now you hold it tight. What do you do? You lower your hand until you hit the spaghetti. You take the spaghetti and put it. Then you lower your hand again until you hit the spaghetti. You take that and put it. And you keep doing this and you keep putting and then you'll have the spaghettis ordered um, uh, in, in increasing order this way. If you just put them this side or if you put them on this side or decreasing order, whichever order you want. What's the complexity of that? Well, if you have to define, you have to first be clear and precise about what operations we're talking about complexity in terms of which operations. The, this operation of lowering a hand and taking one at a time is a constant time operation and you do it for n spaghetti, so it has n uh, performance and uh, linear performance. And so this is interesting because uh, this is to show you that algorithms can be very different and depending on which paradigm you are talking about. Uh, so spaghetti sort, yes, indeed has lower performance than quick sort or merge sort, but it has a very different type of operation. It's not a comparison. You're not comparing each spaghetti to each spaghetti. You have this very powerful operation that takes lowers the hand and takes out something. In fact, speaking of powerful operations, the classic uh, trick of doing sorting a bunch of numbers by making their binary digits on top of the card and then using the sticks uh, to, to, to you know pick them up and you know, take all the numbers that have zeroed in a given bit before the others, right? We did this in a, one, one of the previous video. What's the complexity of doing that? Well, this operation of doing this is a constant, right? It doesn't matter if the, my stack was this thick. As long as my stick is long enough, I do this and I put, it, put those in the front. So, you have constant time operation and you do as many operations as the number of digits. So the performance of this algorithm is only D, starting in N. You could have a 1 billion or 1 trillion size array and perform, as long as there are all 3 digits, they perform same time. You can sort a 1 billion size array in same time as a 1 million array as long as they are both arrays of 3 digits. So its performance is way lower than even spaghetti sort. It's only D, the number of digits or whatever base you're working in. 
but then again, you know, the operation is very powerful, right? So uh, we have to. This just shows us that the discussion of algorithm complexity always has to be done very precisely when we say one algorithm is more efficient than another algorithm, and that concludes our discussion on sorting algorithms.